In a previous video, we developed some guesses as to what might happen for these reactions in this three bay moment resisting frame. All the joints are rigid. We got fixed foundations as the structure responds to a lateral load of 14.75 kips. And we made a very a gross assumption that all the columns equally shared the load, and then that led to the uh, column shear forces being 3.7 kips. It meant it well, and then we also assumed the inflection point was at the midpoint, and that allowed us then to go with a simple free body diagram, come up with what the moment was at the, the base, and then we made a final assumption about well, what happens about. Um, the net overturning moment, and we still need to resist the overturning effect of this 14.75 uh, kips, and that led us to, to making an assumption that maybe the axial forces in the middle columns were, were nothing, and the outer ones then uh, would take up whatever the net left over was, and that led us to a relatively small axial force because the moment arm between those two was so large. Now what we're going to do is improve the accuracy of our approximate method through what we call the portal method. Now, the key concept here is once again going to be to make some sort of assumption about the location of points of inflection. That'll be particularly key. And then we'll also oftentimes assume something about the relative stiffness of the columns, and particularly here we're talking about the shear stiffness of the columns. So in the specific situation that we're dealing with in that numerical example, we've got three bays that are of equal height and equal length. All that equality is kind of important when we start ending up with what the accuracy of this whole system is, and modifications that you can make along the way. Right, so we have 14.75 kips, 14 foot story height, 24 foot then bays. Right now this assumption of the location of the inflection points for the columns could be mid height. If they are, then that's going to make that enable us to go uh, find what the uh, moments are very easily. Now the other thing that's then really important in the portal method, unlike we, what we did in the guess, which was to assume that all the columns had the same stiffness, what we typically do is say that's not actually very realistic to real life. And instead, the interior columns in the frame, not of the building, right? Exterior, interior of the building is not what's matter. And by interior, we mean these two columns are in the interior of the frame, on the inside of the frame, these are on the edge of the frame. The rest of the building might go on, um, but we, we're just talking about the moment frame itself. These interior columns in the frame are going to be typically considered to be twice as stiff as the exterior columns. And again, because as this thing wants to sway over, the tops of the columns will have then the same drift and since we're assuming linear elastic behavior here, then in an F equals KX manner where X is a deformation, if this is all the same for each and every column, but the interior column has twice as much stiffness, it's going to develop twice as much shear force. So that will be 2V on the inside, V on the outside. And now when we go and then do the simple equilibrium equation, we'll get 14.75 minus V minus 2V minus 2V minus V is equal to zero. In other words, 6V is equal to 14.75 kips. When we assumed that it was equal stiffness, we had that as 4V equal to 14.75. And so now the shear force has gone down to about 2.46, uh, 2.4-ish. Kips. I'll just keep the digits in my calculator for now. Right? And then we can come along and figure out what goes on at the base of the columns. Right? Because now we've got that seven foot height, and then up there at that inflection point, and we've got no moment, so there's your 2.4 and change, 2.4 and change there. 
and then you got your bending moment right and that bending moment let's see that's on the exterior column because that was just V so that's going to be 2.4 times 7 feet tips times 7 feet and so times 7 will equal 17.2 foot kip for the moment at the bottom. Before we were guessing 25.8, now that's gone down by quite a lot percentage wise, um, which is kind of interesting. Right now, the, the interior columns, of course, will be twice as big because the shear will be twice as big. It'll be 4.8 and change, probably about 4.9 when you round it up, and then this will become about 34.4 for the moment at the base there. These are now different compared to what we had before. Now that gives us um, a lot of things, but it doesn't give us everything. And so now what you have to do is start thinking about, well, how do I get the axial force in the columns? And there's different ways that you might um, approach this. We could do it actually similar to what we did in the last time, which was to say, I'm going to assume that the interior columns have no net axial force developed. That's the exterior columns that are going to do all the work. So we got 14.75 kips there. We got 17.2 here, 17.2 out there, 34.4 in the middle one. All right, and of course you have the shears that develop there, right? And so those were 2.4, 4.8, 4.8, and 2.4 for those middle ones. Now, I've done this over the full height. I wouldn't have had to. I could have chopped this off right through there. A lot of people would have just chopped it off right through there because then you wouldn't have shown the moments. You just would have shown the shear forces, but the moment arm now goes down by two. There's you know more than one way that one could could write this and do it. Um, this would now be some moments about the base, and I'm not including the axial forces here, so we're not going to get zero. We're going to have 14.75 times 14, and then minus 17.2, there's two of those, minus 34.4, there's two of those. Let's see what that net is that we still need to be working with. Notice I just that's going to be the same thing as times 6. Um, all of that, 17.2 times 6, plus then 14 feet times 14.75, and we get 103.25. So we still have the same uh, resisting moment here that still needs to be taken care of as from before, and that's kind of interesting. Huh, not sure what to make of that. That's that wasn't entirely expected. I thought that would go down a little bit. Um, but what's, what we've done is we've just reproportioned how these moments were um, by spreading out these shear forces, and we didn't really change the moment arm of those any. So that actually, that really should be the same kind of thing. All right, now before we charge off into one last little piece and kind of finish off a couple little things, I want to go back to something here. Some people like to think about the portal method with multi bays as being a string of single bay portal frames that are linked together with a hard link in between the bays. And so you've got a little link there, a little link there, and now you've got this 14.75, and now they say all the columns are equally sharing because I've taken this middle column and in a sense divided it into two. And so that gets you this notion of one, two, three, four, five, six of these columns gets you the same kind of effect that, that goes up here. But what they've also ultimately done here is said that in a single bay, single story portal frame, whatever shear is going just through that, then when I'm doing this shear there, then of course, that's going to get equally divided by two amongst those two columns. And then I'm going to have a restoring axial force, P and P, that will be equal and opposite. Well, if that's the case, then P, P, that goes up as P. Note what's going to happen here, that in the middle, these two are going to be a net zero 
right? And so the idea there is just what we were doing before, that this column, oops, that's going to go the other way, this column force is just going to be taken up by, we're only going to get this overturning column force, force couple, that's going to take up this 103.25 kip foot, and so P column times R, this was 3 times 24, really 72 feet, has to equal the 103.25 kip foot, and that's going to again be that uh, relatively small number, axial force of 1.43 kips, or about 1.4 kips. All right, so that, that's one way that you could approach it. Now, what you could also do if you wanted to is assume inflection points in the beams in the middle. If you do that, that enables you to make additional free by diagrams, such as now, this is going to look like I'm doing a joint free by diagram, but I'm not really. I'm, this is a pretty significant distance here that we're working with. And so this would be uh, half of the 24, so 12 foot. That's 7 foot. And now you've got axial force. Let's see, that will be in tension. You've got the shear force that we have assumed. That was at uh, 2.4. And then up here we have a shear force in the beam and axial force in the beam. And by equilibrium, that has to be 2.4. We don't yet know the axial force. So if we sum moments about the top, notice those moments are zero because this is the, um, the we assume the inflection point there. And that's where we're drawing the free body diagram at. So 2.4 times 7 feet divided by the 12 foot moment arm for the column, we're back to 1.4. Now it was really, this was 2.458 and this is going to be about 1.43, but rounded that's where we're going to get those values. So we're, we're all getting, we're, we're getting to the same place just through different ways of doing that here in the portal method. All about assuming locations of points of inflection, say at the mid height for the columns, mid height or mid span for the beams, and then assuming something about the relative stiffness of the columns, particularly in terms of shear stiffness.